and then at 5 o'clock we are planning to start the religious activities with uh, Bhagavad Seva, uh, Devi Navavana Puja and starting at 6.30 in the evening there will be Lalita Sahasrana by the uh, devotees, by the ladies uh, followed by uh, Ashtotara Archana, Prasati Archana, etc. And then we are also going to chant the Narayana Sthiti, the chapter 11 of Devi uh, Mahatmyam on Friday evening. And then on Saturday, and then followed by Mata Kichauti on, uh, uh, at 9 o'clock. And then on Saturday, we are going to start the programs at 7 o'clock with the Venkateshwara Suprabhadam. And starting 7.30, the uh, Durga Saptasati Parayanam will start. We expect it to go on till about 3 o'clock with all the four rounds of chanting. And then again at 4 o'clock uh, we will have the uh, Thirupuvar singing by the Bhajan Guru. Followed by again uh, 5 to 6 we have a one hour special Veda Parayanam that we are planning with all the priests. And then 6 o'clock onwards the Ashtavadana Seva with various uh, instruments, uh, Veena, Veena, Violin, etc. Uh, to be played in front of the Devi and then followed by uh, Ras Garba at 9 o'clock. Sunday morning 7.30 we are going to start the Chandi Homo. Chandi Homo will go until about 10 o'clock. And then again starting at uh, 10.30 we have the Kalsha Yatra, the Abhishekam and the various Pujas like Suvasini Puja, Dambadi Puja, Kanyaka Puja, Brahmachari Puja etc. Followed by uh, final concluding remarks, Acharya Sambhava etc. So the entire detailed program is available in the front. Uh, please take a look and please participate in all of this. Uh, I don't have much time left, about 5 to 10 minutes is available, so I just wanted to quickly mention that even though we went through the story of Devi Mahatmyam uh, as it is that we can so we can understand what is covered in Devi Mahatmyam, it is important to recognize that there are many many stories behind the story. So what we are seeing is only at one level of understanding. We are seeing story of the Asuras fighting with the Devi and Devi, uh, Devi vanquishing the evil people and, and and restoring the dharma in this universe. That is one simple aspect of it. There is allegorical inner meanings to all these stories. So for example, I'll just, I don't have much time to go through the entire detail, but I'll mention a few key components or key points here. So if you look at the, the three people, the main characters of the story, we hear about Suratha, we hear about Samadhi, and we hear about Sumedhas. So what are these three people representing? Suratha, Suratha, Ratha means chariot. So, in, in fact, if you, if you study uh, Bhagavad Gita or some of our Upanishad, in Kathopanishad, there is a sloka that says, Atmanam Rathinam Vidhi, Shariram Rathame Vatu, Buddhim Pusarathim Vidhi, Mana Pragraham Vacha. So, basically, the Ratha, the main Ratha is an allegorical expression to denote our body. So Suratha is the representative of our body, the King Suratha. Similarly, the word Samadhi, which is the name of uh, the Vaishya. Samadhi means a focused mind. The literal meaning of Samadhi is a focused mind. Again, pointing to the fact that Samadhi is representing our mind. And finally, the person, the Rishi, who is teaching Suratha and Samadhi, the body and the mind, the actual story of Devi, he is none other than Sumedhas and Medha means intellect or buddhi. So basically what this Devi Mahatma story allegorically refers is how the, the buddhi should be able to control the mind and the body. So essentially the mind is controlled by the indriyas of our body, the jnana indriyas and the karma indriyas. So the jnana indriyas observe the various things and we get attached to the various things that happen around us. And so the body, in turns, the mind is controlled by the body and, and if the mind is allowing the indriyas to control it, then it will go in various ways seeking the sexual pleasures of this world. We need a strong intellect or buddhi to tell the mind that the mind should be focused inwards to the real truth and not to stay uh, and to stay away from the sensual pressures of this world. So the story of Devi Saptashadi is nothing but we trying to control our mind and the body using the intellect. That the intellect should be the one controlling the mind, not the other way around. The mind should not be controlling the intellect, but the intellect should be controlling the mind. So and, and Suratha and Samadhi, the body and the mind, cannot achieve their true purpose or true, true goals 
until they meet Sumedhas, the real intellect. So similarly, uh, again, due to lack of time, I'm not going to go into the detail, but if you, if you go back to the very first story, we said that at, during the time of the Pralaya, there were only three beings. There is Brahma and then Madhu and Kaidaba who come out of the ear wax of Mahavishnu. Everybody else is in Yoga Nidra, including Mahavishnu is in Yoga Nidra. So what that shows is, at the beginning of creation, the Sattva, uh, Sattva Rajat, Tamos, the three Gunas are the only ones pervading this universe. Everything else is dormant. So we, we learn in Srimad Bhagavatam and various other Puranas about the creation, about how the creation happened. And, and during the pralaya, during the time of the time of the pralaya, all the three gunas are in equilibrium and they are resting within the paramatma. And when these gunas are tend to come out after losing their equilibrium, that is when the creation process starts. So you can see that there are three gunas. So who are the three people represent these three gunas? The Chaturthuga Brahma, he represents the Sattva Guna. Madhu, the one of the Asuras, he, he represents the Tamas, the, the dark, darkness quality. And Kaitabha is the Rajoguna, one who is more action oriented. So that is one way of understanding the, the story of Madhu, Kaitabha and uh, the, the first chapter. Another explanation for Madhu and Kaitabha is that the word Madhu means honey in, in Sanskrit. So Madhu can, uh, so there is Madhu, honey, and Kaidaba, Kaidaba means an insect. Kaidaba can be translated as an insect. So when there is Madhu, when there is honey, there is also honey being involved at the same time. So we go after, we all want to go after the what is we consider to be pleasurable in this world. We want to go after the Madhu without realizing that at the same time, there is also going to be Kaidaba sitting right next to Madhu, which is the honey bee, the insect. We are going to also get this tongue sting from the insect. So, so, if you are not able to understand, if you do not recognize the Parabrahman within ourselves, our result is we are going to be end up in this Madhu Kaidaba cycle, which is representative of the whole Samsara Chakra, where we have happiness and sorrow, intermingling happiness and sorrow. So these are many, some of the allegorical meanings behind it. Similarly, there is a meaning for the Devasara Yudha. Uh, again, the Devasara Yudha stands for the inner battle between the good tendencies and the Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Mada, Matsarya is within us. So the Devas representing the good tendencies and the Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Mohas, etc. are representing the Asuras. So, and, and, and it is said in the story that this Devas and Mahayudha lasts for a hundred years. The meaning of the, why is it lasting for a hundred years? Because hundred years is generally considered to be our lifespan. So as long as we live, we have this battle within us where the Kama and Krodha and Lobha and Moha, Mada, Matsadya, they are always trying to fight some of the good, uh, uh, good qualities within us. So the forces of light versus darkness, that is always the inner battle. And, and uh, again, uh, and, and the, it also mentioned in the story that uh, the Mahishasura, after winning over the Devas, Ramahayudha, he not only conquered Indra, but he also took ownership over Agni, Vayu and other Devas. And again, what is the meaning of that is Agnirme Vachis Vritaha Vachudaye. So in Veda says Agni, let Agni stay in my, in my, in my speech. Suryo me chakshu shesritaha, indro me bale sritaha, vayu me prane sritaha, chandrama me manasi sritaha. So like this, we say all these devas are various aspects of our own body. So when Mahishasura takes over the powers of all these devas, what that is showing is our evil qualities controlling not only our mind, but all these indriyas, you know, all these indriyas, jnana indriyas, kama indriyas, manas, all the parts of our body. So similarly, there are many, many, I can go much more into detail, but the time is uh, 11.45, so I would like to stop here. So there's many allegorical stories behind all of this, all of the uh, stories within Devi Mahatmya. So Devi Mahatmya again is considered to be a uh, Vedic text, even though it is part of the Purana. Uh, so all of you, uh, please tell your 
uh, family, friends, uh, relatives, everybody else in this area to come and participate in this yajna and get the blessings of the Devi and uh, uh, make this event a great success. I really want to thank everybody for uh, giving me the chance to speak here for a few minutes and I'll conclude with uh, a Devi, uh, Devi prayer. Sarva Mangala Mangalye Shive Sarvartha Sadike Saranye Trembage Devi Narayam Namostute Thank you, Mr. Mangalye. Thank you very much. So again, you know, we have divided now, as I think you explained, the last few minutes, why we use each other's